this set of videos we're going to work through networks. It's part of a topic of networks and matrices, but let's just start with networks. So it's actually a, a branch of mathematics that's been studied more in depth since World War II, partly to do with the advance of computers. Networks can be used for a variety of things, as you can see some examples down here, traffic flow or data flow, supply lines, project management, friendships, disease control. So it's quite an interesting branch of mathematics and it's quite visual. So I wonder, hopefully you'll enjoy these sorts of questions. Some of the terminology that we use here, nodes and edges. So when you see a network diagram, the, the circles or the dots that you'll see, we call them a node or a vertex. That's the singular of the word vertices. Vertex is singular, vertices is plural, and that could represent a person or a task or a computer as it's got written there. And the edges of the arcs are the lines that connect the nodes, so the lines that connect the dots, so to speak. And they might be to do with traffic flow or if there's a friendship connection between those two people, that's how we represent them. Here's an example here of a friendship network, and it shows who's friendly with whom in the school choir. Having a look at that diagram, so the nodes are the circles here that represent each person, and the edges are the lines that connect them. What can we tell from this? Lisa and Pam are friends, so we can tell that by that their, their nodes are connected by an edge, so they're friends. But Jackson and Kate are not friends. So notice here's Jackson and here is Kate, and they're not connected by an edge. But you might say, oh, but hang on, they're sort of connected because Jackson is connected to Kate through Lucy. But in this scenario, we're not talking about sort of those secondary connections. We're saying that they're not connected directly. So algorithms, we're going to learn about this more during this whole network topic. Let's have a read through what we've got here. An algorithm is a set of steps that we can do over and over again to create a path. Sometimes we're looking at the shortest path between some nodes or the longest path, and that's what we're going to work through. Computers are really good at doing these things quickly, and so through computer programming and that sort of stuff, these could be branches of maths that you might be interested in. And so we're going to learn how to apply some of these algorithms. The ones that we're going to work through are here, the number of paths, so just working them out uh, in a basic way, shortest path, shortest connection, also known as minimum spanning tree and maximum flow. It leads into a topic in future maths called optimization, looking at the best path between things. And it's often the shortest way, the quickest way and the cheapest way um, to, to connect certain paths. So we're going to unpack some of those. Some of the terminology that we're going to come across. A network, so this is a um, picture over here for section one there is undirected if the edges have no arrows. So notice that the edges connecting all those letters don't have arrows to say which direction they're flowing. So that's an undirected network. Directed would be the second one here, noticing the arrows that we've got, saying that it flows from A to B, but it doesn't flow backwards from B to A. And so that, then that's called a directed network. As we've mentioned nodes already, and the, the, when they're connected by an edge, they're said to be adjacent. So some examples here for this diagram. Node 1 is adjacent to nodes 5 and 2. Let's have a look at that. Node 1 here is adjacent to 5 and 2. And we can see that because they're, they're connected by an edge. So adjacent, it might not mean absolutely right next to, but it means they're connected by one edge. Adjacent's a word you're probably familiar with when you've done trigonometry, Sokotoa, hypotenuse, opposite and adjacent sides. Node 5 is not adjacent to node 3. Let's have a look at that. 5 is here, 3 is over here, they're not adjacent to each other. Node 6 is only adjacent to which one? To node 4. It's, so it's the only one it's connected to with an edge. And then the degree or the valence of a node is the number of edges reaching it. So degree, valence, words to become familiar with. Let's look through some examples. Node 2 so having a look at node 2, how many lines does it have um, coming into it or going out of it? 3, so it has a valence of 3 or a degree of 3. What about node 3? How many edges? 2. And node 4, looking at the diagram, it's got 3 edges coming in and out of it, so it has degree 3 or valence 3. Now, sometimes edges have weight. For this first diagram here, you might imagine it um, could be traffic flow, maybe the number of minutes that it takes to get from one place to another. And, and do notice that the length of the arc is not relevant. It's not drawn to scale. So 
the length of two may have a longer line somewhere else in comparison to a line of five, that bit doesn't matter. And a connected or a disconnected network, as you can see here in connected, all of the nodes are connected to each other. Whereas in the right hand one, we've got some nodes up the top here. Yes, they're connected to each other, but there's not connected to the rest of the network. And so that's disconnected. So to be connected, you have to have a way of getting from any one node to any other, maybe along multiple paths, uh, to be connected. A little bit more on the terminology. A path is a connected sequence of edges or arcs sometimes, because they might be curved, to connect one node to another. So for example, path of A, B, E, D would look like this on this diagram over here. And, but a circuit is when it's closed, so it's a closed path, if you like. So following that A, B, C, E, and back to A, we call a circuit. Some of these terminology you're probably already familiar with. It's common sense for a large part. And a spanning tree. We especially move into something called a minimum spanning tree in the future. You might think of this as um, sprinklers watering a garden, and they need to be connected by pipes. So the first one here would be a way of connecting all of those sprinklers. This one here, it's got a circuit, as you can see at the bottom there. So it's not classed as a spanning tree because there could be a way of removing one of those pipes. And over here, if you've got something that's not connected at all, then it's not a spanning tree. A quick example here, if we're asked to use a network to model the access to the rooms on the first floor of a two-story house, how would you go about doing a problem like this? So there are nodes and edges. So you start by identifying what the nodes are. So essentially we're gonna sort of remove the walls of the house if you like, and put in all of our different nodes. So you could go ahead and just think about all the different ones or we could label them as we go. So the first one there, we could name the lounge. Then the next one is dining. And I'm gonna go ahead and speed this up as I label the rest. Okay, it doesn't matter which order we did that in, as you can see, I sort of went around. And I bet some of you are wondering, do we label the hall or not? We do actually, it does count as a room for this scenario. So we need to label it and give it a, a node. Now we're going to connect them. So imagine you're in each room or on each node, one at a time and looking to, to see which other rooms that you can get to. So if you're in the lounge, where can you go? Into the hall. Now you can draw these as straight lines, curved lines, doesn't really matter. And we're assuming that this symbol on the diagram is a door. So yes, you can go from the lounge into the dining room. So we'll connect them. Doesn't matter which way you do this, you can randomly pick them or just go in an order. Dining room next, where can we get to? We've already got to the lounge. We could go out to the kitchen or we could go into the hall. Then when we're in the kitchen, obviously one um, edge is already done. We could go to the veranda. From the veranda, you can get to the hall, noticing that that's through there. If you're in bedroom two, you can get out to the hall as well, but also into the bath. Notice I wrote bed two for bedroom two. That's fine to do some abbreviations. If you're in the bathroom, you can get out to the hall. And if you're in bedroom one, you can get to the hall as well. And so that's what our completed network diagram would look like. There are some questions to do now. Thanks for joining me.